Hello and good afternoon everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today for this free training Thursday. And as the subject of the of the session is, and, and as we can all see, it's gonna be the Office Tools Outlook Integration. Uh, my name is Philip Ferris. I'm the Director of Education for Abacus Next, and I'm also the Solutions Architect for Office Tools. So I've been around this program quite a bit. Um, and what I'm gonna talk about today are some of the things that people who um, are thinking about using the Outlook integration with Office Tools may want to consider. I'm obviously going to talk about things that people who are currently using it may want to consider, uh, and then some things that aren't very obvious that I would kind of deem as best practices that we all want to make sure that we're doing when using the Outlook integration. Uh, but before we get going, a little bit of housekeeping. I just want to make sure that my audio is coming in okay. So if, if uh, any of the attendees don't mind, over in the questions area or on your GoToWebinar panel, you can either raise your hand, there's an option there, or if you wouldn't mind just typing into the questions area or the chat area that you can hear my audio, that would be fantastic and greatly appreciated. All right, I've already got a reply. Appreciate it, thank you very much. So uh, this isn't gonna be a very long training webinar. Now typically we block this out for about a half an hour, but the, the, the really neat thing is the Outlook integration is kind of a set and forget tool. And what I mean by that is once it's set up and once it's configured, you kind of really never have to do anything with it ever again. Um, but we are going to talk about some of those configurations and how to set it up. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, best practices. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can use this tool. And it's very important that we take a lot of things into consideration before we start flipping the switches. Okay. Now, some of those things that we're going to talk about um, during this presentation are really the, the Outlook folders. So I'm going to show everybody a way of of keeping everything nice and clean. And what I mean by that is anytime that you connect two applications, um, the opportunities for data, um, I don't use the word corruption, but, but duplication or things of that sort uh, is maximized. So we wanna reduce that and keep it nice and clean. Having new folders to do that will help you, um, help you in that process and we'll talk about that. Um, that's gonna go right into the keeping the contact organized, talk a little bit about how Office Tools and Outlook uh, uh, file contact information because that's an important thing that we need to know. We're also obviously going to cover the schedule and appointments. We're going to talk about email importing and some of the features that Outlook and Office tools um, have that are similar, but we're also going to talk about things that are different. And the reason I want to bring that up is because while we are connecting with Outlook, I want to uh, definitely lean on everybody to consider using Office tools for everything and just have Outlook as a Another tool kind of in the background to where if, if you uh, if you need access to office tools information on your phone, for example, um, then using Outlook as kind of that middleman to provide that is, is really your best bet. But we'll talk more about that. And obviously, we're going to wrap all of that into um, into best practices. Now, at the end of the webinar here, what I'm going to also do is um, obviously leave some time for any Q&A. So if anybody has any questions about um, Outlook, about office tools, about the integration, um, please type into the questions area. I'll do my best to answer those live. If I can't get to them live, then like I said a moment ago, I'll leave some time right at the tail end of the, uh, the uh, presentation to answer any questions that do come up. Okay, so one little thing that I wanna preface, again, before we really truly jump into all of this, is we're gonna be flipping back between a lot of different screens, and unfortunately, there's just not another way to do this. Um, you know, we're gonna be inside of Office Tools, they're gonna be inside the Sync Tool, they're gonna be jumping over to Outlook, um, so I'll do my best to make it smooth and clean or, or do the best that I can to make all those things nice and um, uh, easy to see and easy to understand. But we will be flopping back and forth between a lot of screens, so I apologize for that. Um, in addition to that, we don't do this webinar very often. Again, this is a kind of set and forget um, type of functionality within Office Tools. However, this recording will be available later on through the abacusnext.com uh, website. So it's abacusnext.com slash webinars. Okay, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump on in, and let's talk a little bit about what we're able to synchronize. Now, in order to use this tool, it, it, I need to be clear, and I'm assuming everybody here um, is already using it, and this is really just for training purposes, but if you're not, I wanna give everybody an opportunity to learn a little bit about that too. If you're not using the Outlook Sync, it is an add-on. Um, it does need to be purchased, it does require a license, and you can contact your sales rep to discuss those, or again, just visit the abacusnext.com or officetools.com websites for more information on how to do that. Um, however, once that's done, and once the tool is installed, which is very, very easy to do, um, really, you're kind of entered into this screen, and it's the smaller box that you see in the middle of the screen here, okay, the Outlook Sync integration. 
And what we're able to connect with Outlook and Office tools are really four main areas. Right? We can we can connect and synchronize the contacts between both applications. We can synchronize tasks. Now in Outlook, it's just a singular thing. It's just called a task. However, from the Office tool side, it's going to be to dos and calls, things of that sort. But they all kind of get funneled into that single task item within Outlook. I want to talk about the schedule, which I think is the reason most people are interested in this tool in the first place, is just to have that mobile calendar via Outlook and be able to synchronize those two things. And then lastly, and probably arguably, maybe one of the most important features that I think people um, uh, don't quite realize is here or don't understand maybe the value is the mail import. So we're going to talk about all four of these areas. And when we first open up the Outlook Sync, this is the screen that we're set to. So. A couple of things that I want to preface, and, and we're going to go down each one of these, but a couple of these things I want to preface about the contacts is I want everybody to understand that there is a difference between how Office Tools uh, displays and handles data versus how Outlook does the same thing. Now, in Outlook, there really is no entity. There's no, there's no focused entity with alternates in that type of format. And if you're familiar with Office Tools, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, one example. I'll just move this out of the way very quickly, is in the background you see that I actually have ABC Company. Now ABC Company is the entity, that's my client, that's who I do my work for. However, in that context, Joe Demo is the person I typically get on the phone with when there's a, a something that needs to be discussed. Right? He could be the owner, he could be the manager of the company, um, a bookkeeper for that, for that office, whatever it may be. Office Tools is focused on the entity, which is ABC Company. Now Outlook doesn't do that or it doesn't have those same tools. So if I pause for just a moment and I jump over to Outlook, okay, I can go ahead and do a search for ABC Company. And I've already synchronized this, by the way. You'll notice in Outlook that it's not referring to ABC Company as the main entity. It's actually Joe Demo. It's the contact. It's the name that's associated to an office tool. So this is just a formatting thing. This isn't Everything is working as intended. This is just the difference in styles between how Outlook is going to display information versus how Office Tools is going to display that same info. Now, if we're talking, you know, a company and a name, it's very simple. We have one contact in Office Tools and it creates one contact in Outlook. However, were I to add a second contact in Office Tools, and again, anybody who's familiar with the program understands that I could come up to the more contacts area, I could create an alternative contact, and now I have two names associated to one entity, right? It may be Joe Demo and Bob Smith. <laughs> and both Joe Demo and Bob Smith are connected and work at ABC Company. Okay, and an office tool, all that makes perfect sense. However, when that information gets pushed over to Outlook, what we will end up with visually are two cards, one for Joe and one for Bob, who both work at ABC Company. Now, again, that's as intended. That's just the difference in the data between both programs. Now, if we were starting off with a fresh, uh, a fresh slate, meaning we had no contacts in Office Tools or we had no contacts in Outlook and we just wanted to turn this on for the first time and, and push or pull uh, uh, this data from one place to another, that's something we want to consider because the information we have in Office Tools is going to look different when it gets to Outlook, although everything is connected and synchronized correctly. If it's coming from Outlook originally into an empty Office Tools, then we might want to talk about some things because the formatting is just going to be a little off. And we might want to make some concessions or some choices about um, uh, how we want that information to look ultimately once it's inside Office Tools. I would even consider, and this would be as a little best practice, if you're new to Office Tools and you don't have contacts or you want to import contacts from Outlook into Office Tools, do not use the Sync tool because you don't have control over how these fields get matched. It's just basically getting everything over. What I would recommend is that you use the built-in Excel import tool. So what you're able to do is export your Outlook contacts, bring them into Excel, make sure they're mapped to the correct place within Office Tools, and then run that and populate your Office Tools data. Now, once Office Tools looks good, once you've done your Excel import and your Office Tools formatting is correct, you would actually create a brand new contact folder with an Outlook, an empty one. And you can call it whatever you like. You can call it Office Tools Contacts, <laughs> Professional Contacts, however you want to describe it, it's going to be an empty folder. 
because what we want to do is make sure that the formatting that Office Tools uses is what's pushed into Outlook, not what Outlook does with that formatting and then push back into Office Tools. So I know it's a little silly and it sounds a little weird. We'd be more than happy to, to walk you through it step by step with one of our trainers or one of our consultants. Um, but that's kind of generally what um, uh, the approach you want to take when moving data back and forth between both programs. Okay, now I've already done that. So for example, in my Outlook, I actually created a, um, a folder called you know, Demo Contacts, just to open this up. So I created a, a folder here called Demo Contacts. And there's a couple reasons why you'd want to do this. One, as I just described, because we want our data to be nice and clean. Um, a second reason why you actually might want to do this is because a lot of times in Outlook, you have more than just professional contacts, right? You might have, you know, uh, Uncle Steve <laughs> in your Outlook. And we don't want Uncle Steve in Office Tools. Uncle Steve does not belong in Office Tools. But going through potentially hundreds, if not a couple thousand contacts one by one to figure out who should go one place or another can be pretty time consuming um, uh, doing it from the Office tool side. So what I'd recommend if we just want to keep everything nice and clean is create this new folder, add from the original contact folder in Outlook into here all the contacts we want to save. So if we had a contact in one folder and we want them to be in Office tools, we would simply drag them into our new Office tools folder and that's what we're going to go ahead and connect to the Outlook sync. So in either scenario, we have this new folder, and this new folder has contacts in it. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we have office tools that may or may not have them, and we want to sync the two together. That's when we're going to go ahead and actually open up our Outlook sync, and we can see those four categories. Now, each one has a set of options, and while we're not going to go through every single option, I'm definitely going to point out the main, the main things we want to focus on. All right, and you will, everybody will notice here, by the way, that I do not have task turned on and I do not have the mail import turned on. And the only reason I don't is because we're working with fictitious data and there really just is nothing to sync. So it's, you know, instead of having it, you know, trying to push information back and forth and slowing things down when there's nothing there, I just leave them off for demonstration purposes. But starting with the contacts area, right, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is actually open up the options menu here. And what this will allow us to do is now choose those um, folders, all right, and make some other observations, some some uh, choices on how we may want to sort and filter this information. So the very top one here is where we actually choose that demo folder or that professional contacts folder, office tools contacts, whatever you've named this new folder, this is where we're gonna go ahead and select that. So we're saying this particular um, office tools logged in user is connected to this particular Outlook user. Which reminds me, and I, I apologize I didn't cover this at first, when you first install the Outlook Sync, you're going to want to make sure that you're logged into Office Tools as yourself, and it will actually give you a screen to confirm that. Um, again, we just want to make sure that the, you with an Office Tools is connected to you <laughs> with an Outlook. So you should do this on your own workstation with your own logins. Now, if you find the need to filter or sort or organize your contacts as far as syncing in different ways, Below this, you have a lot of filters to do that. For example, you can organize it by contact groups. You know, you, you may want the Outlook Sync to only synchronize clients and not prospects or vendors or, or other professional contacts. You may want it to only synchronize your clients because you're the account manager. So you have some options here as far as, far as filters and, and tools to get the right type of contact to go back and forth. Okay, once you're done with that, you simply say okay. And that's it. You can go ahead and flip the switch for the contacts and it will begin to populate and synchronize those details back and forth. Now that exact process is gonna continue for all of these. If we open up the tasks um, options area, we have to choose the task folder, the types of things that we want to be converted into task as they go to Outlook, all right? The assignments that we want to go over, for example, if we're working on a tax return and we want our review assignment to show up in Outlook as a task, then we can go ahead and choose those options here. Typically though, and this is what I would recommend in most cases, unless you have a very special need for the Outlook Sync, most of these filters are not going to be used. Um, when we're talking about synchronizing, especially with Office tools, with all of the things that Office tools is able to do, um, I kind of subscribe to the, it's better to have it and not need it, than need it and not have it. So I would recommend you point these to the folder that's appropriate in Outlook, and you leave all the other filters clear, giving you all of the data. Um, but if you do need those tools, then obviously you have those available to you here. Okay, so we can go ahead and sync up our task folder. 
Uh, our schedule would be next. And again, a lot of the same things. We have to choose the Outlook equivalent of our folder. In this example, I do have it selected to demo calendar which is my demo, uh, just that, my demo calendar, versus my personal calendar, right? Um, me having a, an appointment at the at the dentist tomorrow may or, not, may or may not be something I want in office tools. So again, I can create folders to to bifurcate those, those details. The one thing here that I want to point out that is important, however, is the sync appointments from date. So because it does have to synchronize and go back and forth with a lot of data, what I would recommend here is, is putting a realistic um, uh, time frame as far as how far back you want to go. Maybe that's a month, maybe that's two months. Um, I won't even be mad if you do six months. But there's really not a reason to push this tool to, to go back five years. Um, that, that's really just not necessary. Um, it'll, it'll slow down the sync, it'll take a long time for it to update originally, and I, I just I haven't heard a very, very compelling reason to know about an appointment from five or six years ago. So pick your battles on this one. Um, if you feel you have to do that, then of course, set it back as far as you need it to be, um, and all the appointments from that time frame will be added into Office Tools. But my recommendation would be you know, a, a month or two or maybe even a couple months, and no further than that. Something else on this you may want to think about is the um, what you allow Outlook to do. Now, this is true for all of these, but on the calendar, it has a little bit more of an importance because you're going to be probably doing more things um, in the calendar through Outlook instead of Office Tools than you are some of the other areas. And what I mean by that is typically the contacts, the tasks, and even the, uh, maybe not the mail, but, but uh, definitely the contacts and tasks are going to originate from Office Tools and then just be sent to Outlook. So we're, we're good to go. However, with the calendar, you're probably going to be doing things on your phone. So if you're going to be changing appointments and, and schedule items on your phone and you delete something, you may or may not want that to go back into Office Tools and delete it from Office Tools. Um, or just simply update or change things. Again, this is something you might want to consider, but you do have the ability to control what items get updated, uh, get deleted, or get created based on each one of these tools um, as, it comes from, as it comes from Outlook. So again, something to consider. Now the last one here is the mail import. Now the mail import's a little trickier because it does link directly to the document management. So you do have to have document management with an Office tool set up. Um, and once you do that, you have to define what folders of uh, what, what mail folders get synchronized. Um, are we filtering anything out? Are we treating the inbox and the sent box as two different things? And how are we categorizing those? So there's, there's quite a bit more options here. We're gonna go through some of the, the key ones. Just like the prior areas, we've got to find the folder we want. Now, what's cool about this is we can actually point to multiple folders. So if you had a general inbox and you just wanted to kind of grab everything, then you could do that. Okay. If you have a lot of folders, as I do, I have, probably have too many folders, then you can grab a, a slew of those things to monitor. And how the utility works is it's going to look at those inboxes that you've selected. And if it recognizes an email address from an email with a contact that's in Office Tools, meaning that email address has to be present within Office Tools, it will make a copy of that email, an MSG file, and it will import that automatically into document management under that contact's name, regardless of who received that email. So if, um, you know, if me and my partner are both communicating with a client and we're receiving different emails from that same client, well, the, the problem is, is that I have my email and my partner has his email, um, but I don't have access to his email unless he sends it to me and vice versa, right? And, and then we get into the whole CC re reply all kind of conundrums. Um, and so hunting down and researching things, especially when it comes to emails, can be a little tricky. This solves that problem because assuming both me and my partner are using this utility, then every email that comes in from that client is being reposited into one place. So both of us can go into Office Tools we can go into document management and we can select and find all of the emails that have gone back and forth. Now, for obvious reasons, we may want to control what emails come in, um, what folders get uh, uh, saved or at least um, synchronized. So one option is what I just described. You can pick all the folders you want and you're done. But we may want to consider something that we've already kind of learned is that we can create new folders for things. And inboxes are something that people are mostly familiar with when it comes to creating new ones. Um, it could be beneficial for you to actually have an Office Tools inbox. 
And what I mean by that is you could have a general inbox inside of Outlook. And then as emails come in, you simply add them into that specific folder. And at that point, the sync tool will say, ah, there's an email. Where does it go? Let me go ahead and add it to that contact. So you're using yourself as a filter to determine whether this is an email that needs to be company available or this needs to just stay in my inbox. Um, those are kind of two different flavors. And again, our trainers and our support teams can uh, be more than happy to talk to you a little bit more about that. So we have some filters we may want to choose. Okay, We also have that similar option to the schedule where we can decide how far back we want to import mail from. And again, use this with caution. We don't need emails from five or six years ago. We just don't. And if something comes up and we really absolutely have to have those emails, you know what? We still have Outlook. We can just go into Outlook and get them the old-fashioned way. So pick your battles on how far back you want your emails to be imported from. Um, there's no rule here. Um, you know, maybe you do it by period, right? Um, go back to the beginning of, you know, Q2 or, or, or the beginning of the year or the end of tax season, however you want to define it. But just pick your battles because remember, it has to scan every email, every client in your office's database, match those two things up, then actually create a file and then import the file and categorize it with an office tools. It can very, be a very long process and very hard on your computer systems to, to go back um, you know, that far. So pick your battles with that one. However, once you've done it and you've done that initial sync, then you're good to go. It just kind of updates here and there. And we'll actually talk about sync intervals here in just a moment. The last part of the email import is to actually decide how you want to categorize those emails as they come in. Okay, so email inbox items can go into a specific category. Uh, email sent items can go into a separate one. And obviously, document categories are something that you can customize with an Office tools, so they can you could make it whatever you want. You know, email received, email inbox, fills email, however you want to define it is fine. Okay, and again, once we're done, we simply say okay. And there's one last option that I'm going to point out because I don't recommend it. I know that sounds kind of odd to have an option that's not recommended, but there are some use cases where it may be helpful. But generally speaking, the option here to delete from Outlook after import is not recommended. Um, for the same reason, of it just we just want it in Outlook also. If if you're if you're very picky about having your Outlook cleaned out all the time, you just don't want anything in Outlook. You want everything in Office Tools. I can completely respect that. Go ahead and check the box, and as it imports it into Office Tools, it will remove it from Outlook. Okay. All right. So we've gone through our settings. We've we've selected our new folders. Um, now it's really just a matter of flipping the switches and turning these items on. The first time you do that, things are going to basically stop. <laughs> so if you're doing this for the very first time and you have a lot of data, it might be something you want to do at you know 4:55 at the end of the day and let it basically do its thing all night and come in in the morning and have everything done. Um, however, once that process, once that initial kind of import export push pull is done, then it's just a matter of it just updating itself. Now, you can control when these items um, refresh themselves, okay? So if you're in the Outlook Sync tool, there's a sit, an area up here under settings, under advanced, that actually allows you to, to choose just that. How soon do each one of these categories update themselves? For example, I may want to put the sync for the contacts at something like maybe every hour, you know, or two, because what it has to do when it syncs, right, is it has to kind of scan everything. So we don't want this happening every five seconds because the sync will constantly be asking for data and, and that could affect performance across the office. So for contacts, you know, maybe it's an hour or 30 minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, that's okay too. But again, pick your battles. You don't want it to be too, too um, soon, otherwise it potentially could start slowing things down, especially if you have, you know, 15 people in the office all doing it every 30 seconds. That's something we want to keep in mind. Same with tasks, um, same with mail. The one area here that I would I would say we have a little bit of leeway on as far as time, maybe the schedule. It is really nice having the calendar and the schedule update almost in real time. It's typically not a lot of data that's going back and forth. So I think we can get away with having the, the calendar sync be a minute or something like that. That way it's almost real time between the two programs. Okay, so have a look at these settings, choose your intervals, and the tool will run based on those intervals and update everything accordingly. If you have the need to update everything right now immediately, you can always come back into the Outlook Sync, 
and simply just hit the sync now button. It'll run through all of these items and update everything accordingly. Okay, so there's a couple more things I wanna talk about. I don't see any more questions, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and start typing those in. We have about six minutes or so left in the webinar. There's a couple more uh, things that I wanna discuss uh, before we jump right into the questions. But if you have any, now's a really good time to start entering those in. Okay, so as far as the contacts go, we talked a little bit about how the data may look different in both applications, even though they're connected 100%. Um, right, Office Tools has a single entity with multiple alternates underneath that, as where Outlook sees everything as kind of an individual uh, contact, and it will split them out differently. So that being said, there's some considerations with the schedule we want to talk about too. So if I come back into Office Tools here real quick, and I'll just, again, I'll just slide this integration out of the way for just a moment. When I create an appointment within Office Tools, um, as I do with any kind of data, there's certain bits of detail of information that I need. Okay, um, I obviously need a date and time. <laughs> you know, this, this is a calendar, so we need those two things. But Office Tools also wants you to have an entity, a contact that that appointment is associated to, right? It's, it's entity-focused software. We have to have a contact. So if I select a particular time of day here, let's just say noon, I can go ahead and click on it, my appointment windows pops up, and now I have to start fulfilling some of these things, such as client name, okay? the type, the staff, the subject, very, very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I have my appointment in there and in 10 minutes or whatever my interval might be set up for, it's gonna go ahead and push that information into Outlook. Fantastic. Here's the other side of that. If I come into Outlook and I go to my schedule, okay, and I wanna create an appointment, I do not have to select a contact. There is no entity reference when it comes to making appointments within Outlook, okay? I simply create appointment. I choose a time, I choose a date, I put in my subject, and that's basically all I get. So when this information then gets pushed to Office Tools, we're missing something. We're missing the contact. It's not being recognized by Office Tools because Outlook is not providing it. So what you will end up with is an appointment made for unspecified. And to show you what I mean, I'm actually gonna go into Outlook here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a 1.30. I'll click on the time slot. I'll put in Outlook meeting. Go ahead and hit save on that puppy. Now, of course, we can wait the 10 minutes for uh, the sync to go ahead and run its automatic scan. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go ahead and hit, just hit sync now. Okay, it brought in the Office Tools appointment that I made a moment ago. So we can see ABC Company, because that was the entity that I selected in Office Tools, and the subject of my meeting. And then the Outlook meeting that I created, let's go into Office Tools and have a look there. Okay, oh, looks like it hasn't quite pushed back over yet. But what I would end up seeing is an appointment here in Office Tools under unspecified. It would look just like this. Oh, it popped up as soon as I did that, go figure. So it would look just like this. In fact, let me delete one of these. So it's a little clearer. That's what I get for waiting for the sync. So you'll notice here when it originated from Outlook, there is no contact for it to be associated to within Office Tools. That's important because any appointments you make on your phone or any appointments you make inside of Outlook itself will not be associated to a contact in Office Tools. Now that doesn't mean I can't come in here and click on it and, and change it to the appropriate contact. That's not a problem. But Outlook does not provide the details that Office Tools does. And for that reason, when they originate from Outlook, they may not be complete, they may show as unspecified. Which gets me to my last point. When we're talking about Outlook and we're talking about Office Tools, we really, really, really want to do everything inside of Office Tools. What I mean by that is we wanna create our new contacts. We wanna create our tasks, our appointments. We want our emails to originate from Office Tools as possible. All of those things we wanna start with Office Tools and then let it go into Outlook. And as we need to use Outlook for, again, mobile purposes, um, things of that sort, then that information will be there. We wanna to try to minimize entering things into Outlook for the sake of them coming over to Office Tools because Outlook does not have all of the same information, uh, uh, functions or details that Office Tools has. One uh, joke that I kind of bring up sometimes when I'm working with offices is I ask them if they've heard of or seen the um, accountant's edition of Outlook. And at this point, they look around the room, wide-eyed, wondering why the, what they've been missing out on all these years. 
Um, how do they buy the, out, the, the accountant's edition of Outlook? Um, and then I let them down dramatically by saying there is no accountant, accountant's edition of Outlook. However, there is Office Tools, and Office Tools and the calendar within it has been built specifically for our profession, for our needs. Time tracking, contact detail, uh, project and workflow stuff, documentation, et cetera. So we want everything to originate in Office Tools as best we can and simply use the Outlook integration, the Sync tool, as a way of getting that information into Outlook for more reasons than anything else, mobile devices. Okay, remote access to Office Tools data if we're not on the cloud um, or we don't have a, a resource like that. Okay, fantastic. We are at the end of our session here. The last thing that I want to bring up for everybody before we go, um, I don't see any questions in there, so thank you all very much for attending. Um, I do want to talk about one last thing before we jet, though. We do have a conference coming up in July, and I would really love to have everybody join us for this conference. Um, it's Abacus Maximus. It's going to be in Las Vegas on July 9th. You can actually go to abacusmaximus.com and see all the different date ranges, actually from the, uh, I believe, the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Um, so go ahead and check that out. We're going to have CPEs. We're going to have trainings and breakout sessions covering all kinds of topics, uh, speakers, thought leaders. Um, I'll be there, so that right there is kind of worth worth coming. <laughs> but please go to the website, check it out, join us at Abacus Maximus in Las Vegas. And again, I want to thank everybody very much for joining me today for this Office Tools training webinar.